The following video topic is one that I kind of had floating around in my subconscious. Like, I didn't really think about this until I saw it laid out in an article the other day, but today we're talking about the Detroit Red Wings and we're talking about their centers. Because even though it is quite obvious that their first line center is going to be the renowned Dylan Larkin, there is an interesting conversation as to what happens next. Who is going to be the second line center of the Red Wings? And part of the reason as to why this is so interesting and so weird is because the two candidates that we have at this spot are really, really similar players. Let's take a look at the guy whom the Red Wings signed last year to a 2027 expiring $5.6 million AAV deal, Andrew Kopp, as well as the guy they had signed this most recent offseason, a 2028 expiring deal at $5.1 million a year, J.T. Comfer. Comfer and Kopp are both 28 and 29-year-old guys who had signed five-year deals at around five-something million dollars a year with the Red Wings. They did so in this previous offseason as well as the one from last year. These two guys are really similar players, and when it comes to what they're going to be able to accomplish together... This is kind of where the second line center argument comes and goes. You see, Andrew Kopp last season had 42 points in 82 games played, which isn't terrible, but when you consider that he was actually at 39 points in 55 games played a few years ago with the Jets, as well as over a point per game with the Rangers in 21-22's regular season, you could acknowledge that there is some very good talent here that might not have fully manifested with the Red Wings in 22-23. Meanwhile, JT Comfer, last season for the Colorado Avalanche, had a 52-point season in 82 games played. He's always been more so of a middle-to-bottom six type of center, but the past few years he's really gotten into the more stabilized role of producing. And so now, heading into this upcoming year, having Cop and Comfer, two $5 million five-year guys at 28 and 29 years old, together, it's going to be really intriguing as to seeing where this goes. Now, as I said, this idea was kind of floating around in my subconscious for a while. When the Red Wings signed Comfer, my immediate thought was, hey, didn't they just do the Andrew Kopp deal last year? Is this not like a rinse and repeat type of thing? The contract is similar, the player profile is similar, even the type of players they are, they're pretty similar. And so all this was just kind of floating around there in the back of my mind, but then it really came out to play when I saw this article published by Devin Little a few days ago on the Hockey Writers, Red Wings 2023 Training Camp, Five Storylines to Watch. Now, of course, there are five things written about here by Little, and it's all a pretty good read. You can go out there and read. Link is going to be in the description if you want to get those scoops. But if you scroll down onto the last question that is asked here in the article, who is the second line center? During the 2022 offseason, the Red Wings signed Andrew Kopp to a five-year deal with an AAV of $5.625 million, with expectations of the Ann Arbor native becoming the team's go-to second-line center. After undergoing core surgery, he missed all of training camp, but still made his Red Wings debut on opening night of the season. Naturally, he was slow to find his footing in Detroit, but he still managed to finish the season with a respectable 42 points in 82 games played. Not exactly second-line center numbers, but also not bad considering the circumstances. During the 23 offseason, Iserman seemingly doubled down, signing JT Comfort to a five-year deal with an AAV of $5.1 million. Comparing Comfort to Cop produces a lot of similarities, even down to the fact that they attended the University of Michigan together almost a decade ago. They're both versatile two-way forwards that can play on the wing and on special teams. The biggest difference between the two of them is their handiness. Cop is a lefty, while Comfort is a righty. So there you go, pretty much the only difference you could find there. And handiness, I guess, while well, some of y'all might think, oh, it doesn't really matter, I mean, left or right, it just kind of is what it is, right? And sure, while that is a fact to consider, it still is important to acknowledge, because when it comes to face-offs, and when it comes to the location of face-offs, whether or not a face-off is taken on the left or the right side of the ice, also with whether or not the center taking the draw is a left or a right-handed guy, it could produce easier results when trying to win the puck off the draw into certain areas you would want the puck to go to. If you're a right-handed guy taking a face-off on the strong side, right-handed side, it's easier to do that four-handed sweep and play the puck into the middle to get it to your left D. 
if you're a left-handed guy in that same position, you would need to struggle a little bit more to win the puck back on the backhand, and you could kind of see the differences there when you visualize it. There's a bit of nuance when it comes to thinking about face-offs and handiness, but regardless, this is a difference to consider. The article goes out there and says this towards the end, As things stand right now, it appears that either Kopp or Comfer will be the Red Wings 2C to start the year, while the other one holds down the fort on the third line. Throughout the season, they may switch places based on performance, chemistry, injuries, etc., but both figure to play key roles in steady minutes for Detroit this season. Both players signed with the Wings after posting career-best numbers. Comfer had 52 points last year, Kopp had 53 back in 21-22, so you'd like to see both players replicate the efforts that earned their paydays. And of course, hopefully you'd want to see them actually produce more, because, not gonna lie, 50-something points out of your second-line center, it's a tad short, I feel especially when it comes to the way the Red Wings want to grow and progress. If you could see these guys maybe getting upwards of 60 to 65 points, I feel like that's more in the appropriate range of acceptable. But either way, the biggest variable in this discussion, as brought up by the article, is Marco Casper, and whether or not he can force Copper Comfer over to the wing. In Casper's one NHL game last year, he filled the second-line role with Kopp and Lucas Raymond on his wings. If the Austrian forward can force Eiserman and company to make room on the roster for him, it'll be interesting to see where Kopp and Comfer, the team's two big-money free agents, sit in the lineup. And so, heading into this upcoming year, I feel like this is more of a battle than it is a showcase, because a lot of these guys are going to be trying to compete with each other for more ice time, trying to compete for better line mates, not to go out there and disrespect anybody in the bottom six of the Red Wings, but taking a look at whom this team has on the wings right now, I mean, of course, on your first line, you're going to have Larkin, Raymond, Debrinkit probably, but your second and third lines have some pretty respectable wingers too. You're going to have Fabry, Berggren, Perron, maybe Daniel Sprong or Kostan swapping around in there. If you wanted to keep Rasmussen at center, there's also a thing you could do as well. But the Red Wings have a pretty decent middle six, and it's going to mostly come down to ice time and deployment that I feel is going to be the biggest diversification between the wings. Obviously, you could see any of Perron or Fabry or Berggren actually producing points and doing well. That's definitely not out of the question. But when it comes to the two guys who are taking the draws in Kopp and Comfer, I mean, if you have a guy playing third-line minutes the entire year, it's going to be tough for him to best out his career high of 50-something points. And with that same argument in mind, would you want to keep a guy who is making five-something million dollars a year on your third line? Maybe you try to stack it all up, say, okay, here's Comfer and Kopp together on the line with some other winger like, I don't know, Berggren or something. Throw Perron on the line with all these players so you have a bit of an older, more experienced setup there. Who knows? There are a lot of options that Lalonde has at his disposal, but it's all going to boil down to what we see at training camp and preseason. For now, though, the second-line center role seems to belong to one of Comfer or Kopp. If Marco Casper can insert himself in there, we'll see what happens. If Michael Rasmussen shows off a lot better, we'll see what happens there, too. But at the end of the day, let me know your thoughts in the comment section below. What do you think about the Red Wings in their second-line center position behind Dylan Larkin? What happens with Comfer and Kopp? And did you sort of feel the same way that I did when the Red Wings signed Comfer in the first place that, hey, this is a really similar type of player to Andrew Kopp, signed for a similar amount of money to a similar term and who is similar aged as well. There's a lot of similarities here with the exception of handiness. What are your thoughts about the entire copy-paste type of thing here, signing players that are very similar to each other, and do you think that that is the case here with this Comfer and Cop thing? Stevie, why? What's going on? What do you think? Let me know your thoughts in the comment section below. I hope you enjoyed this video. And bye.